God has designed the seed to produce a harvest. That's the purpose of a seed. Amen. So if God didn't want increase, <laughs> then He wouldn't have created the seed. The fact that He's created the seed by just by that knowledge that God creates seed to multiply, that's His intention of the seed. Hello again, this is Alan Bagg and welcome to Wisdom for Life. We are setting ourselves in a place in the Word of God where we can trust Him for increases, bonuses and promotions. Listen, it's God's desire for you to increase. I so love getting around the Word of God and finding out what God says on issues because I know the devil has tried so many different ways to steal from God's people. He tried to destroy our lives. I know for myself, in my life, I was in a place where, man, I, I, I got into such a financial mess. And we're not just talking about finances. It's happened to be around finances. But my life was in total destruction when I gave my life to Jesus. I thank God He saved me when He did. Otherwise, I would have been finished. Uh, it's like I've sometimes said, you know, I owed so many people so much and I was in such a place of lack that I couldn't even pay attention. But praise God, I had enough attention to focus on the Word of God. And it's because the devil has lied to us in so many different ways that poverty somehow is, is, is a blessing, that poverty somehow is a way to keep people, you know, focused on God. No, poverty is destruction. It is a lie from Satan. And poverty has one purpose, and that is to destroy. That is the, from God's Word. You can read about it in Deuteronomy chapter 28. When you go look at the curses, poverty is listed right there under it. And in fact, if you have a look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor. The borrower is servant to the lender. God's desire is for you to increase. We saw previously this week in Genesis where God created man. He gave him the instruction to increase to multiply. We saw in Psalm 115 verse 14, may the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. <laughs> Get a hold of that promise. May the Lord increase you more and more. Now, yes, something. The Word of God is yes and amen. So if you read something in the Bible, it is God's desire for you. When He speaks it, and it is His blessing, and it's the life of that blessing, that is God's plan. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God will not turn around and say, no, I didn't really mean that when I said it, or times have changed. Now, when we were under the old covenant, there's an old covenant promise and blessing. The new covenant comes into place. It establishes the promises that God has given. So now that we're born again, you have eternal life. Therefore, everything that is connected to that life being blessed, that is now manifested as a truth and a reality in your life. Now, if God said He'll increase you more and more, that means if you believe God right now for increase, and that increase happens, you go back and read this verse, it'll still say the Lord increase you more and more. So now that even though you've increased, you can trust and believe God for more increase. Why? Because the more you increase, the bigger your capacity for increase grows and increases as well. Remember we saw in Isaiah chapter 54, where God told us in verse 2 and 3, to enlarge the place of your tent. Make way, make room, because He wants to multiply. So you and I prepare the way. We prepare the way for multiplication. We prepare the way for increase. And when we prepare our way for increase, we will increase. But what happens is, now that you've increased, there's more to do. So if I think in terms of this ministry, when we first planted the ministry, we only had the capacity for a small building. That was where our faith was. That's where we trusted God. But we had a bigger building than the people that came. There was a lot of empty chairs. But we enlarged, we wanted it as big as possible. But it wasn't long before that place was filled to capacity. We were having multiple services. 
and we realized we've overgrown this building. What do I need to do? If I want to see more increase, we got a bigger building. And that bigger building has bigger expenses. There's bigger management needed for it. There's bigger processes that are going to happen. More staff are involved. But we put that in place. But by the time we moved into the building, we were like, in this building, we were big and overgrown. But now in the new building, we got all these empty chairs again. And it's just a small crowd. So I'm looking in and say, what do you need such a big building for, for just this group of people? No, the Lord said to enlarge. He's going to increase us more and more. And what happened? The building filled up, went to multiple services, we were overflowing, and we'd gone beyond our capacity. Now, if we at that point thought, well, this building's actually big enough, you know, it just handles all these people just well, well, that's all we'll ever be. We'll just kind of hop, and that's where a lot of times all of us land up in situations we don't understand this principle. We wonder, why aren't we growing? Why aren't we getting bigger? Well, your capacity is only for this amount. Again, we need to enlarge our capacity. We need to grow. And so we trusted God for the next building. And then the next building came. And again, it was way bigger, way more responsibilities, more staff were needed. And the expenses were beyond just what the small group could be. So where now, before we had our building full to capacity, multiple services, we move into the new building. Now it's even bigger and there's even more space. People may have walked in that day and said, what do you need such a big building for such a small group of people? But that small group, I mean, if we went back to our first building, we couldn't even get through 30 services before, you know, get everybody through that. It just wouldn't work. It just not, doesn't have capacity for it. But we grew. Every time God said grow, every time we stretched, the increase took place. Every time we made room for the multiplication, the multiplication happened to where that was filled to capacity. So do you understand in reaching more and more people, we need, there's more people that need to get saved. We may have just got the people in our neighborhood saved. Then we get the people in our town saved. Now we're headed for the city. And then we're going to affect the nation. And then we're going to affect the continent. And then we affect the world. That increase is going to keep taking place. So every time you think, oh, well, now we've arrived. <laughs> no. There's more increase. And so for that to happen, God has to increase you. Think about that. You as partners with this ministry, those that are friends and partners of this ministry, for, for the whole to increase, the individual has to increase. Does that make sense? If the whole is going to increase, the individual has to increase. So for all of us as partners together, taking this gospel to the world, preaching to multitudes, getting multitudes saved, we have to increase. But that means you have to increase. And that's God's desire for you to increase. And here he says, he'll increase you more and more. God's desire is for you to prosper. I don't care what anybody has said. They can mock it. They can criticize it. They can call us names. I'm going to keep going back to Scripture. Let's look at the Word of God. Come with me to Psalm 35. This is God's will, God's intention. And if God said it, that settles it. Isn't that right? Look at verse 27. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Now, the righteous cause today is the preaching of the gospel. So those who favor... The righteous cause of preaching the gospel. Let them say continually. What does that mean? That means we're going to say it all the time. It's something you and I need to be saying. I'll never shy away from it. I'll never go quiet for it. Well, at least I believe it. You know, no one else has to believe it. So I'll just be quiet and believe it on my own. No, let them say continually. Yes, yeah, something you and I need to be declaring. What should we be saying? Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Hallelujah. Do you favor the righteous cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ? You do? Then say this. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in my prosperity. God is pleased when you prosper. Now, if God takes pleasure in prosperity. And Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells me, without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
yet God takes pleasure in prosperity. But you can't please God without faith. But he has pleasure in prosperity. That means he is pleased. Faith pleases him. Prosperity pleases him. That tells me prosperity took faith. Can you see that? So faith produced prosperity pleases God. Now there is a way to get rich in the world, the Bible says, and the prosperity of a fool will destroy him. But the Bible tells us clearly that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. He adds no sorrow with it. When God's involved in it, you prosper His way. He is well pleased with that. Why? Because I had the faith to believe it. I had the faith to say, God, if you want to prosper me and you want to bless me, I'm going to believe that. And when I do, He rewards me, according to Hebrews 11:6. And now I'm prosperous. And because I'm prosperous, it pleased the Lord. So I want you to do that. Just right now, settle it in your mind. Increase is God's idea, was His first instruction to man. He wants to increase you more and more. And He takes pleasure when you increase. Amen. Now that's the promise of the Word. Now here's the thing. How does increase happen? How's that going to multiply? Come with me to Mark chapter 4. Remember we saw that when God created man, He blessed him in verse 26 and 27. 28, He blessed him. And then He gave the instruction to multiply. Verse 29, He gave him seed. He gave him seed. So how does that multiplication happen? How does the increase happen? Mark chapter 4, look at verse 26. Jesus is now describing the kingdom of God. He says, the kingdom of God is as if. So we've got to understand that the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, right? And it's manifesting in this natural realm. So when God created man in his image, he's talking about the spirit of man. God doesn't have a physical body like Adam had. So he was put into a body to live. This is the physical manifestation. But the way the kingdom operates is the realm of the spirit. You know, the Word of God says God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. It starts in the Spirit. So whatever you need is in the Spirit. It has to be drawn out into the natural. So the kingdom of God is a spiritual existence in this natural realm. It's not a separate place. It's here. You and I are operating in the realms of the Spirit. But to understand the realm of the Spirit, Jesus puts it into natural explanation. So He says this is how the kingdom works. The kingdom of God is like this. A man scatters seed on the ground, and he sleeps by night, rises by day. The seed sprouts and grows. He himself does not know how. That's important to get a hold of that. I don't have to know how it works. I just need to know that it does. He does not know how. The earth heals crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. When the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. So God has designed the seed to produce a harvest. That's the purpose of a seed. Amen. So if God didn't want increase, <laughs> then He wouldn't have created the seed. The fact that He's created the seed by just by that knowledge that God creates seed to multiply, that's His intention of the seed. So do you notice a seed always produces more harvest than itself. I mean, can you imagine a farmer? He wants to grow some corn, uh, millies in South Africa. And so he says, okay, I'm going to grow this corn. He gets a corn seed, one corn seed, and he plants it. Of course, a corn bush comes up, and then the ears, and then he gets the ears off, and he pulls back, and there's nothing there. He pulls back, nothing, and he goes through all the ears, and he finds the last ear, and he pulls it back, and there's his corn seed back. He's got his one seed back. No, that's never going to happen. The seed is designed to increase. He expects, if he puts one corn seed in, he expects a whole bunch of ears. And all those ears are going to have hundreds of seeds on them. Hundreds of corn. That's the promise of the Word. Seed always increases. Now, Jesus said the way you do that is you've got to get the seed into the ground. And you plant that seed in the ground, you can expect it to grow. Some say, I just don't get that. I don't, I don't understand how it works. Well, that's the good news. We don't have to know how. There's a lot of things we do in our lives we don't know how. 
See, I don't know how if I eat food, once I swallow it, I know the basics. There's nutrition, you know, all the vitamins and the minerals and the fiber. And I know more or less what these various things are for. I don't actually know the mechanics. In fact, I don't know how to do it once I swallow the food and it goes in. I don't know how to extract the vitamins. I don't know how to put the fiber into the right place it needs to go. My body is designed to do that. All I need to know is get the food in. You get the food in, the system's designed to do it for you. Just get the right food in. That's also important, amen. Get the right food in. Your system's designed to process it. And as it processes it, I enjoy the strength and the health that comes from it. And I can enjoy the complexity of what God's designed in the simplicity of me just eating it. The same way God has designed for His system to produce increase in your life. And the moment you sow your seed, you get that seed in the ground. You don't have to figure it out. The system's designed to multiply and increase. And I sometimes people have said, yeah, but you know, you're talking about sowing seed. Yeah, Jesus is talking about putting actual seeds in the ground and producing a bush. How do you link that to my giving? Well, Paul did. If you come and have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we won't have time to get into this in too much detail. We'll have a look at it in detail tomorrow. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, he says, This I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. What does that mean? You put one millipop in the ground, one corn seed in the ground, you're going to get one corn bush. It's not rocket science. It's just it's the, the mathematics of it, the, 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 the way things are designed, is the way it works. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Put 10 milli seeds in the ground, 10 corn seed, you're going to get 10 corn bushes. Put 100 corn seed in the ground, you get 100 corn bushes. So that is the truth. So if you sow, if you want a large harvest, if a farmer wants, let's say he's got 10 hectares out there, he can't just take a handful of wheat and hope it fills the field. He has to work out, there's a formula that they use, how big that field is, how many bags of seed he needs. And he'll go down to the co-op, he'll go and buy bags of seed, and then he'll, he'll fill that whole field. He needs to put a field full of seed to create a field full of harvest. And then, verse 7, Paul says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So here's faith. It's saying, see, a farmer doesn't take his, now he's bought all the seed for 10 hectares, and he's got this bag of seed. He doesn't go out there crying, oh man, I'm wasting all the seed, I'm losing all. No, he goes out and puts it out there, and he says, I know it's going to produce a harvest. He does it cheerfully. He doesn't think I could have made bread with that. No, this seed has one purpose. And that's to produce increase. And the only way it's going to produce increase is when it's put into the ground. And he puts it in the ground and he says, I know I've got a great harvest coming. And he celebrates that. And so the same way, Paul converts our giving into seed sowing. He shows that it's the same principle. So when Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 that the sower goes, the kingdom of God is as if, God gives you the way to produce increase. If it's in the natural, He'll give you seed. If you want babies, you have seed for that increase. If you want to build a, a business, there's time and effort you need to put into that. If you want to increase financially, there's a seed that needs to be sown. And it's not just, it, it's your giving into the kingdom of God, and I'll show how that works. But there's also trusting God for wisdom, investments, it's, it's going out and putting that work, in, that, 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 that finance into action. And when you do that, you will see multiplication, multiplication and increase. Now, we're out of time for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to do that, how to apply God's system so that you can see increase. But I've got something else I want to share with you right after this. It's vitally important. Watch this, and I'll see you in a moment. When we honor Him and honor His presence and honor His life, and you trust God, expect Him to lead you, you will always prosper and you will be blessed. You will experience the fullness of God. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. I received an email from the client's finance department, a notice of payments. 
I went for an interview and was told that I was considered perfect for this job. Somebody deposited money into my account with the reference as per the Lord. They would provide all the training that I need and company branded clothes. And to top it all off, a much higher salary than anything my husband and I had anticipated. More than 40,000 rand of medical bills written off and that I should not have to worry about any future bills. We've come together expecting the presence of God to manifest as an anointing for increases. Join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. God is ready to increase you. He's ready to multiply you. Don't miss out on this opportunity to experience His increased anointing. He is the God of provision. He's the God of supply. And I'm ready to stretch and to step into the abundant flow of the kingdom of God. Join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. You can also participate through your seat by joining us online. God says, I give my word so that you can call on it. I give you a promise so that you can believe for it. For any info, please contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries. The kingdom of God is designed to increase. Anything with life increases. It's God's design. God wants you as His church to experience prosperity in every area of your life. God is ready to increase His church and you're a part of it. In this series, Alan Bad shares faith building revelation from God's Word on the subject of increase. He's built it into you. He's designed you for increase. In this series, you will discover the purpose of increase. You will learn how to step into a place of expectation and you'll come to understand how to position yourself for increase. Set yourself up for it. Set yourself up for it. Purchase this faith building series and position yourself to experience God manifesting His goodness through you. Contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries at any of these details. I am so excited for you. I know that God has a time of increase prepared for you. He wants to increase you more and more. We've settled that in the Word of God. We see that it's God's plan. We've seen it through other people's lives. And now it is your and my turn. We're expecting bonuses to happen. We're expecting promotions to happen. We're expecting increases to happen. This is a time where we believe God and stand on His Word. Now, you do understand, you can believe God for healing at any time. But we have healing meetings. And when we stand in agreement around God's word for healing, we've seen people healed. And you can believe for healing at any time by faith. Well, the same way, God wants to increase you all here. But this is a time when we take to center around the word of God, a specific moment where we worship God and thank Him for His promise so that He knows we believe Him. And then just as a farmer would take seed and put it in a field and say, I'm ready for a great harvest to come my way. We're going to sow our seed and believe God that we set ourselves up for Him to be able to move in our lives through the harvest of increase. So you can be a part of that as well. We're going to be getting together on the Sunday night. The details are on the screen. You can be a part of it by going onto our website, connecting up with us. And the moment you do that, we're going to stand in agreement with you. That night when we pray over everybody for that anointing, it's going to be available to you as well. We're going to believe God together and we're going to see increase through all our partners' lives. That's why we're in partnership, so we can see it happen for you. Now, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And I want you to know that God has given us the word of increase. It is time for increase right now, every time you think about it. So get a hold of this. Listen to it again and again and again. Develop your faith for it so that when the enemy comes to try and steal that from you or someone tries to talk you out of it, you say, no, I have the word on the issue. God has spoken. I believe his word and I receive it. And so get yours today. Friend, the most important increase that can happen in your life is the knowledge that Jesus is your Savior. Because before that, we were lost, we were dead in our sins, and we were headed for hell. Dead. You understand that? Not just our, our, our bodies may still be living, but we were separated from God. But God loves you. He gave His life for you. And He paid for every sin that you could ever have committed or ever even will commit. It's done. 
All you have to do is believe that. And you've never yet prayed a prayer like this. I want to invite you to do it today with me. Right there where you're sitting, say this out loud. The Bible says, if you say with your mouth, if you declare Jesus Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So let's do that together. Father, thank you. You sent Jesus for me. He died for my sin and rose from the dead, forgiving me. Today I receive your forgiveness. I'm cleansed of unrighteousness, and I am now born again a child of God. And from this day I live to serve you, to honor you, to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You are born again. Now, I have a gift I'd like to send you. This is a Bible study program. It's going to help you read through the Bible in a year. This card will explain to you what's happened, some guidelines now that you are a Christian. And my Christian passport out of this world of failure into His kingdom of victory is a faith-building CD that's going to help strengthen and build your faith. Now, that is my free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. And we'll also pay the postage if you write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number. As soon as we've got your details, we'll get that off to you. All right, that's all we got time for today. We'll get together again tomorrow. I look forward to being with you there. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We invite you to visit us online at alanbaggministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Allen Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. Whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.